In the early 20th century, New York City was filled with streetcars. Many who didn't own personal vehicles used these streetcar and tram lines in conjunction with the elevated and underground subways to traverse the city. In the mid-1900s though, these lines quickly became phased out and were replaced with bus lines. Many of these bus lines still run the old tram routes to this day. For example, the M102. Running from South Ferry to Harlem, the Lexington Avenue streetcar line was replaced with an omnibus line, now the M102, in 1936. Was this the right choice though? Should we have replaced our streetcar lines with buses? And should we consider building new ones in the future? Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the future. In 2016, proposals for a new streetcar line running along the East River between Brooklyn and Queens were brought to light. The proposal, dubbed the BQX for Brooklyn Queens Connector, quickly caught backing from the former mayor of New York City, Bill de Blasio. The line would have run between Astoria and Gowanus and would have had connections to 13 subway lines. Proposals for the line, however, were met with criticism and backlash, mainly for it not really serving any new areas and just running alongside the NWNG lines for most of its route. Now obviously, this was the wrong route to suggest. It would be a waste of money to construct an all new streetcar line that runs along the same route as a subway line. I think streetcar, tram, light rail lines, whatever you want to call them, should be constructed along congested corridors throughout the city those that possibly aren't already served by a subway. They can be useful along corridors that don't have adequate bus service or even none at all. I think one of the main corridors that can use a tram line is Fordham Road in the Bronx. This might seem a bit ironic, being that bus lines replace them, but I want to convert the BX-12 select route into a tram line. The BX-12 route, according to the 2019 bus ridership data, is the second highest ridership bus line in the whole of the city. Anyone like me who has taken the BX-12 more than a few times will know that this is true. Buses are packed, dwell times are long, and it doesn't help that it's constantly stuck in traffic along Fordham Road. Now, some might say that the solution to this is a busway, and while that would be appreciated along Fordham, I think a light rail line separated from road traffic would go a long way and would provide much more capacity. It will help provide easier transit access to those living and working along the corridor while giving Bronx commuters a great option for crosstown travel. As I said in a video a while back on the D line to Co-op City, the Bronx, despite having good subway connections into Manhattan and the southern portion of the borough, lacks any type of crosstown line. Currently, people wanting to get from the east to the west of the borough and vice versa have to either 1. Take a slow bus that often gets stuck in traffic like the BX-12, 26, and 40. Or 2. Take one of the IRT lines into the Southern Bronx or 125th Street into Manhattan only to transfer to another one that serves the other side of the borough. Clearly, crosstown travel needs to be improved in the Bronx and along many corridors throughout the city. Fordham Road and the hold of the BX-12 route is one of these corridors. Now, how could a tram, light rail, or streetcar line be implemented along the route? Well, here's what I'm thinking. The line would run similar to the current BX-12 line today, making a loop around Pelham Bay using the overpass at Wilkinson Avenue. However, to avoid mixing with traffic on the I-95 and Pelham Parkway, the line would cross the Westchester Avenue overpass and turn back up Burr Avenue. The line would rise to an elevated guideway and run alongside Pelham Parkway until Stowell Avenue, where it would descend. It would then run in the center of Pelham Parkway. West of White Plains and Boston Roads, we would need a bit of reconstruction to the parkway. This involves the median being widened to make room for the tracks. This would be done to avoid having the line rise again onto an elevated guideway. The line would cross Southern Boulevard and enter a new Fordham Road busway. Four of the six lanes on Fordham Road would now be dedicated to buses and trams, while cars can use the other two lanes. Considering how congested it gets between Grand Concourse and Webster Avenue, however, I think the best course of action would be to close off the road to personal vehicles. 
Anything outside of that though, will be open to personal traffic. I picture this busway being separated from the regular roadway with plants and greenery because you can never have enough of it. At the end of Fordham Road around Sedgwick Avenue, trams would mix with street traffic and run across the University Heights Bridge following the same route as the BX-12 into Manhattan, terminating at Broadway for a connection to the A train. The BX-12 select bus route would be eliminated and this tram would take over service, making all stops the previous bus route did. The regular BX-12 route would stay in service, however only running between Sedgwick Avenue and Co-op City, making all local stops. This new tram line, like the BX-12 select bus route, would connect with 8 subway lines and many bus routes, allowing for easy and quick transfers for people needing to get to other parts of the borough and the greater city. Now of course, this line wouldn't do much good if it didn't run frequently and if it was always stuck in traffic. With this in mind, I propose headways of between 8 to 10 minutes during off-peak hours and as low as every 6 to 8 minutes during rush. Trams would get priority at intersections and for a good portion of the line, on Pelham Parkway would be mostly separated from road traffic, allowing for it to reach high speeds. Now that we've figured out the routing for this line, just what rolling stock would it use? I think a great model to have in a city is the Alstom suck on this, I mean city this. It is a widely used tram and can be seen in cities like Sydney, Paris, and Europe. Wait, I mean cities in Europe. N never mind, it could be seen in Dubai uh, as well. Just look at this, tell me it wouldn't look good in New York City's Empire livery. These trams would be low floor, feature automated announcements, and have digital wayfinding screens. I'm gonna throw a graphic on screen showing what I think some of the signs and screens can look like. Light rail and tram routes are found in cities all across North America. In some places, they are used in conjunction with other modes of transit, like subways and buses, and in others, they have formed their own little mini metro networks. These networks have been proven to work well. Just look at Toronto, Seattle, and Minneapolis. I think it is time for New York to invest in them too, and create our own light rail and tram network in the city. Not only will it improve service on various corridors in the city, but it can also be a cheaper option as opposed to building a subway line. Think of places in southern Brooklyn, central Queens, and on some of the crosstown streets in Manhattan. They can all use trams, and I think it is time for us to open our eyes to this mode of transit. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to get more from Mystic Transit, like, subscribe, and consider becoming a channel member.